Vanessa Iwobo, fellow here at the Department of Management, and you work on critical management theory, and your right. particular interest is Africa. You have this idea that there's a sort of Western approach to management, which you kind of reject, which is all the guys come in from Coopers and Libran, and they tell Africa how to behave. But also, you have this criticism of a kind of anti-imperialist model, which says we have to reject the whole West because this is just another example of colonial power. That's right. And then you say, there's this kind of hybrid approach, and you have this idea of indigenous knowledge, one of your terms, and neutral third space, and observation, communication, storytelling. It's not the West, it's not anti-West, mm -hmm. it's management. What is it? It's hybrid. A bit of this, a bit of that? That's right. Essentially, Pan-African approaches tend to romanticize and essentialize. Um, well, let's get all the colonialists out of here, and you know, and uh, they sort of paint this Africa as utopia, you yeah. know, beauty, and uh, well, let's go back to the primordial times and all of that. And I think that's totally unrealistic because the world has changed, and all of that, uh, you know, worked in stable societies, and we do not have stable societies anymore. So you're kind of stuck with the West. So therefore, it is a bit like sort of the West with a little bit of sort of African spin. Exactly. The West is here to stay, and yeah. so are we with it. And we, we're actually, th that dichotomy is easing out. The earlier we start to um, not essentialize that difference, the better for us. We have to negotiate it. Right. But what, what does it mean in practice, you see? I mean, say take uh, an African country, I don't know, Rwanda, with, okay. say, with a very strong leader and so on. Okay. Or Nigeria with a new leader. Okay. What does having this hybrid approach to leadership mean if it doesn't mean a bit of uh, Western advice uh, and it doesn't mean the unbridled romanticism of old Africa. Mm -hmm. What does it mean? We have the influences of the West through the pop culture, internet, e all of that, e this, e that. We have all of that, those influences coming to bear on the uniqueness of the experience in that context. So we cannot do away one with the other. So if a guy who ran a country, we won't name a country because it might be controversial, but who thought, oh, you know, all this freedom stuff gets in the way of progress, my people expect me to be a strong leader, so these elections are part of this kind of Western trick. You would be saying, hey, maybe that's a bit hybrid, or you'd be saying that's in unacceptable. I mean, do you just become an apologist to whatever the African leader does under cover of African hybridity? Mm -mm, mm -mm. No, you do not become an apologist. What you do essentially is like I said, the first thing, you need to make peace with who you are. Yeah. And identity, narrative, and all that is not carved. Culture is not carved in rock. Mm -hmm. Culture changes. I mean, it's, 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 it's dynamic. It's, you know, so what I say is we must, we must uh, remain abreast of the times. We must make peace with who we are and what we have. And we must negotiate that context because yeah. you, you can't, that's why. And know, be confident. Is it, is it in a kind of way about being confident as a, as a continent? Confident able, as a yeah, continent. Yeah. I think as, as part of a global community, not just as a continent, but as part of a global, we are part and parcel of the global community. Yeah. We cannot, we, we are not isolated, regardless of all the romanticism and all the essentialism, we're not isolated, we're part of the global community, so we must work as part, part, part and parcel of that community. But the we there, you see, I mean, I, I've read what you've written about yeah. Nigeria, that yes. makes sense. I mean, Nigeria is complicated, but at least it's Nigeria. Yes. Well, the West, as you said earlier, is, is sort of varied, but my goodness, Africa, it's Libya, it's Nigeria. Exactly. Exactly. It's, it's not South homogeneous. Africa. Yes. Is there such a thing Absolutely. as Africa? Ah, now the argument is that Africa is a colonial construct. Yeah, I was going to say that to you. Yes. But the thing is, this is what we have to work with right now. Africa. I am very careful when I say Africa. I like to say African society because that gives me space for variation. So it's unique. It's heterogeneous. We, we have the Middle Eastern influences in the far north. We have other influences south of the Sahara, but it's still within that land space that's called Africa. Be it a colonial construct or not, that's what we know it as. It's here to stay. One of the things about Africa recently, accepting completely what you've just said, is that there's been some powerful women leaders yes. in Africa. It's one of the big interests to observe in the last while. Now, you're a young person settling out in a career. You're here at LSC. Does you specialize in leadership? <laughs> Are you uh, partly tempted to go back to Africa and Nigeria and lead my people? to lead my people to submit yourself to the will of the people? Not at the moment, but 
If I'm called to serve my country in any capacity, I gladly will. I mean, there's a famous example of um, this lady in my country, uh, Dr. Okonjo Iweala, doing great things, turn the economy around, and that's very, quite admirable. I like such things. So I, I would like to go back and make impact at some point in time, but not, not in that big political way as, no, no, no I'm, I'm quite happy the way I am. Vanessa Iwawa, thank you so much <laughs> you. for submitting yourself to the Gertie Grilling. You're welcome. It was pleasant to be on this hot seat. <laughs> <laughs>